Get out. Hello, tankers and tankettes. Welcome to an IS-8 replay. Probably the last one you'll ever see of mine because this was my ace tanker game. I figured since I now have the IS-7 firmly ensconced within my garage and the IS-8 has been sold, I should probably actually show you this match. It isn't actually that great, to be honest. I don't think it was a particularly good match. Um, very favourable matchmaking, as you can see. Platooned up with Sircon, which helps, because, um, as we all know, the Beardmeister is OP. The speed actually works for it quite well on this particular map, when the ability to get to those strategic positions early is really useful, and the fact that you're carrying a big beefy gun with you as well is extra useful. And the only really scary thing at the top tiers on the enemy team is that Object 704, and he's not going to be at the top of the hill unless he's being super aggressive. You never know. Anyway, we're just going to speed off to this side of the, the map, myself and Sircon in his M103 with all of the polygons. I just want to say something now, that there is something a bit weird going on with 9.0 replays, which was really noticeable in that that game I did, or that video I did about artillery, and you could see there that there was a real delay in between, oh, that frame rate up there, okay, there was a real delay in what I was aiming at and then how the reticle was behaving, how it was catching up with that. It's nothing to do with the server-side reticle thing for replays, because if you have that enabled while you're watching replays, that can cause some derpiness. That has been turned off for a very long time, because I had some issues with it a while ago and figured out that that's what the issue was, so it's not that. It's just there seems to be more delay than I actually experienced, and I don't know why it is. It's something particular to 9.0 replays. And I think I probably notice the little replay bugs more than other people do, and they're obviously not massively high priority, but there have been some interesting and annoying ones over the years. Like, for instance, 810 replays had a thing where if you pause it, you then can't zoom in and out, you can't scroll to look around your tank, you can only do it while the replay is actually playing. Which, when you're trying to take screenshots, as I was, as I still do, is quite annoying, as you can imagine, but clearly wouldn't have been something that would be a high priority for Wargaming to fix. But they did fix it, at least. It was only for the one patch where that was an issue. Anyway, I'm up here now. I'm on my own-ish. There's a pair of autoloaders trailing behind, so I do have some backup. I'm not going to go too far, I just want to see what I can see. And I do have optics on this. I started off with gun lane drive and vertical stabilizer and I found that really that wasn't helping spectacularly because one of my complaints about this is the fact that I mean everyone says you know play it like uh, a heavy medium because it kind of is and it's not like I'm totally terrible at that style of gameplay I do all right in the FCM 50T but the gun handling on the FCM 50T compared to this is so much better. And I know it's a totally different sort of gun. But all the same, this thing is just bad at snapshots. Even with a good crew, even with a vertical stabiliser, it, it's just... You have to sit and you have to aim. Now I kind of fluff this shot here. I don't know why I had that hesitation. And then I just kind of fire off into nothingness. I, I don't know why I was trying for that tricky... I mean, maybe I, I pegged the IS-6 as being a bigger threat, but trying to hit the top of the IS-6 turret with this gun, not the easiest thing to do. So I'm going to switch back to the KV-5 at this point, and I know I can punch through the front of the KV-5 turret with this gun. I mean, that's one of the downsides of the KV-5. Even though the armour is on paper really quite good, even if you've managed to hide the Radio Man binnacle, there's still a lot of stuff. A tier 8 tank destroyers, a lot of stuff in tier 9 that can just punch right through the front of your turret. Anyway, artillery fires and misses, which I'm quite glad about. It's only a tier 7, but on the other hand, it's the tier 7 American, so, you know. See if I can finish this guy off. No, I think I actually caught the, the corner bevel of his armour there. And that's... That's about the only way you can bounce on the, the turret, unless you 
got some good angling going on. And again, I, I have some... I have access to the side armour of that guy, and instead I try for his turret. Again. But maybe I thought I would actually bounce off his side armour, because that... The IS-6 armour is fairly troll. Now we're going to see in a moment what I mean about that aim time. And although the, this has the mobility suited for that kind of aggressive medium playstyle, by the time I've just not even fully aimed, he's got time to angle the front of his tank. Oh, bounce an IS-8 shell there, very nice. I did have some lucky bounces in this one. This is one of the few games where the armour actually felt like it was doing something. And there we have, again, the time it takes me to not even fully aim, he is able to move his tank and actually his tracks eat my shot. Sircon polishes his off, his off, him off, which is a nice shot because look where Sircon is, he's pushed all the way down there, he's got Rhymatol for backup. He's taken a bit of punishment but uh, not as much as that 5100 has taken though. <laughs> That's the uh, perils of French tank. Everyone goes, ooh, free damage. And yes, look, see? Object 704. Bounce. I can probably count on one hand the number of times I've had tier 9 tank destroyers bounce off this armour. It can be quite troll, but it's not at all reliable. You can't count on something bouncing. You can't go, oh, I'll angle my tank and they'll bounce. It doesn't work like that. So I'm just going to use my mobility. I'm going to just stream past him. I don't know why I even tried firing that, I just don't have the gun depression. But the fact is, he is turning my way, and that means that the 5100 could come in behind him. He's actually going to start moving around there, so I might even get a shot. Yep, there we go. And the 5100 puts one in, and I think the Rhymatol, yep, Rhymatol finishes him off. And I'm just going to keep going down here, use my optics to try and maybe spot the last couple of defenders. Maybe even nail artillery, because that would be nice. Now this is the other way in which I was lucky with this match, not just with the map ma uh, matchmaking, not just with the kind of map, but also the fact that the enemy team wasn't especially good. And there's enemy artillery, and I decide I'm going to go for this guy. I take a hit from the ISA in doing so, but screw it, scumbag down. And actually that's one where the gun worked for me, in that that was quite a, a small target. And, yep, there we go, just this aim time the same time. I think I would have gone along a lot better with this tank if the gun handling was better because I, the, I, the FCM 50T is a really nice machine and I do quite well with that and that's in a similar situation. It's a tier lower, it's a rather different sort of gun but the armour is the same in that you sometimes get like troll bounces and whatever but the gun handling is just so much better. It's so much better at those peekaboo shots. It's so much better at that kind of aggressive medium play style. Whereas this, you have to stop and aim, and then you take fire, and then you lose your hit points, and then you die. So I'm not glad, uh, I'm not sad, rather, that I have sold it. I'm not going to miss it at all. The IS-7, however, I think has been worth the grind. So we'll take a quick look at the scores there. Ace Tanker, as I mentioned, and a Steel Wall. One of the very few Steel Walls I had in this tank. I actually did, you can also see there, a lot of spotting damage. I didn't do that much actual damage. And that spotting damage combined with the actual damage meant I was actually in first place ahead of Sircon, who did way more damage than I did. He did over a thousand damage more. Uh, but despite the fact that he did do over a thousand damage more, because I had coated optics, I actually picked up all that spotting when we were working those guys on the hill, when I was rushing down against that 704, possibly at the end there as well. So that's what bumped me up, that gave me that extra XP that gave me that Top Gun, uh, Top Gun, Ace Tanker. And 1267 base XP seems a bit low for a tier 9 heavy, honestly, but maybe I just got lucky that week with the fact that it wasn't a very high bar either. Who knows? So all around, I think that was more a lucky match than a skillful match. I didn't play that well in bits, uh, but I did okay, and that's all I ever really did at best in the IS-8 is okay. It's never really a tank I was comfortable with. So... Although the IS-7 has been worth it, I, I don't know, the grind was a little bit painful, but I've had worse, to be honest, I have had worse.
So if you enjoyed this replay, you can hit the like button, you can leave a comment below, you can subscribe to my channel, and of course, as always, stay tuned for more.